It is not a person or situation that affects your life. It is the meaning you give to that person or situation which influences your emotions and actions. Your choice is to change the meaning you gave it or to change your response in order to create the outcome you want. Shannon L. Adler. Welcome to Long Haul Hope a podcast for long haulers, their loved ones, and those who care about them. My name's Joe Grabowski. I'm a husband, a father, a pastor, and a tech geek. I've had lifelong struggles with depression, anxiety, and ADHD, and I've also most recently been diagnosed with long-haul COVID after suffering from shortness of breath, severe fatigue, and brain fog for over two years now. Long Haul Hope is not a medical podcast, but a voice of validation, empathy, support, and solidarity. Most of all, It's my desire that this podcast will be a voice of hope in the midst of the darkness of a diagnosis we do not yet fully understand. Each week, I'll share personal updates, positive news developments, advocacy, helpful resources, which I hope will be of value to you in your journey with long COVID. If you felt misunderstood, unheard, devalued, or even been made to feel as though you're a hypochondriac, you've come to the right place. You are not alone. Together, we are stronger. There is hope. Well, hello, friends. Happy New Year 2023. Can you believe we're in 2023 already? We are three years into this pandemic. We are almost a quarter of a century into the 21st century. And life is just rocketing by ever faster. Or at least it seems to me. I often tell people, though, this has been the longest two weeks of my entire life. If you remember back in the early days of the pandemic, the whole two weeks to slow the spread, just isolate for two weeks, wear the masks for two weeks. But here we are uh, back to wearing masks in our workplace and optionally when I'm out in public and it's really crowded and I know COVID is everywhere, I'm still choosing to wear a mask or just to stay home. But anyway... I wish I could hear from you right now. How were your holidays? Uh, how has your New Year's been so far? Did you survive the holidays? Did you Were you able to be present and participate in family celebrations? Um, did you have a crash? Um, is it just wearing on? What happened? I'm going, to, I'm going to catch you up a little bit myself because it has been a while since I last recorded a podcast episode, uh, considerably longer than I had initially planned. But not neither here nor there. I'm here right now. And um, I'm just trying to recall everything that's happened in the last several months. Um, and I guess I guess the biggest thing is that I am here. I'm alive. I'm healthy to a respect. I've got um, some control and autonomy over my long COVID and uh, the dysautonomia that comes with it. i taking day by day, breath by breath as it comes. Some days are better than others. Some days I feel close to normal, as I've talked about before, and other days I feel like I'm right back at the starting point. Um, Those are the most disheartening of days. But what I want to talk about today is, uh, is the lessons that I've learned. So when I'm looking back over these last three years in particular, I'm thinking about the lessons I've learned through COVID. And the importance of not dwelling on the negative, which would be so easy to do, but finding the good among the bad. And now, as I referenced in a teaser for this uh, episode, there's two particular stories that I want to share um, that were good things for me that came out of the pandemic. And But before I get into that, I would invite you to reflect on your experience through the pandemic, COVID or not or through your time of being sick, your diagnosis, whatever the case is, whatever misery, whatever uh, challenges you faced these last few years, I would love to hear from you about some good things that have come out of it that may not have otherwise come unless you went through what you went through. Now that feels very um, Pollyannish to say, very optimistic that, oh, we can find a silver lining in every dark cloud, but it's true. It's not easy to do, especially when you feel encompassed by the swirling darkness. It's very difficult 
sometimes to find a single glimpse of light. But it's there. And if you can't find the light, you feel underneath you, and you could feel that there's solid ground beneath you. You are, you may be enclosed in darkness right now, but you are not floating aimlessly through the nothingness of space. In some respects, we are grounded. We are safe. Now, the first thing that came out of it was, I remember, and I'm sure many of you remember as well too, during those early, early days before COVID was known on our shores, watching the news out of China, you know, every few years there'd be some news about a bird flu or the avian flu, the swine flu, something. Uh, even I remember a few years back, Ebola started showing up on our shores and there was a little bit of hysteria around that, but it quickly faded. But even so, every time there's something like this that starts um, becoming in the spotlight somewhere in the world, our eyes are just watching. But what we saw happening in China seemed rather disturbing. We saw videos of people collapsing in the streets. We saw uh, videos of people basically sealed into their city apartments, or seeming like it. We saw videos of body bags everywhere and this nightmare scenario and but in some respects it was like as long as it's over there and it's not affecting us we're not going to worry about it but covid ended up hitting our shores now if you know my story um the official word we've gotten is that the pandemic started you know we started all our stuff here shutting things down back in march of 2020 but i got sick in december of 2019 i'm not going to rehash all that that's in an earlier episode um, but I did come to find newspaper articles and journal articles that uh, lend credence to the belief that COVID was in the States as perhaps as early as October 2019. And whether you believe that or not is beside the point. My experience was I got really, really, really sick in December 2019, thought it was the flu, um, but I did not go to the hospital. I just stayed home and rested, but I felt sick forever. And I've never been the same since. So, of course, seeing that news out of China and, uh, and, and, and putting these pieces together in the context of being sick and not feeling well, it really cast this anxiety and apprehension over me uh, about possibly what was coming. And then, lo and behold, it hit the States and all of a sudden... It was all over the news and it was popping up in all sorts of different states that there were COVID here and COVID there and places were starting to shut down and there was restricting travel and and you had to wear masks and you had the social distance if you could even go out at all. And it, it was just chaos and we all remember it well. And just talking about it can be a little bit triggering. And the world's gone on back to normal since then, but at that time... I was scared. Now, I have faith. I believe in God. I believe that there's nothing that happens in this world outside of his providence, his awareness. And yet I can admit it, I was scared because nothing like this had ever happened in my lifetime. Especially when it got to the point that I couldn't even go drive down to Connecticut to go visit my father and my sister, which was only less than three hours away. We couldn't even travel, and, and nobody seemed to know how this was going to play out. Nobody seemed to know how bad this was going to be, but the world held its breath as more and more reports came in about p hospitalizations and people going into the ICU and being put on ventilators and people passing away and all sorts of the, some of the scenes that we'd heard about in China was happening here in the States. And I was scared. So I remember uh, this one day, I often wrote back and forth with my dad. My dad and I, um, over the years, have really developed a, you know, a good, comfortable relationship. And we're able to talk and um, talk through email and messenger and catch up. And, this, and when I would go visit him in Connecticut, we'd get to talk for a while in his living room. Uh, my dad's not a really a telephone person, and really, I'm not either. I don't like talking on the telephone much either. Um, and I happened to write my dad this one day, and I said, Dad, honestly, I'm scared. And he wrote back, and he said, you know, what, well, what's scaring you? And then 
he said, would you like to talk about it? And he invited me to call him, which was a huge thing for me because I know my dad doesn't like to talk on the telephone. So I asked him how he felt about video calls because that's what we've been doing for work. And I'm already was fairly comfortable with uh, making Zoom calls and Microsoft Teams calls and Google Meet calls. And lo and behold, he said, yeah, let, let's, let's plan on talking. So we made an appointment to talk on a Saturday morning, uh, 1030. And we got on Facebook Messenger and we talked, for, I think, for a couple of hours. And I got to talk about my fears and anxieties and worries and concerns and got to receive just calmness and comfort and encouragement from my dad, which I've gotten over the years, but to be able to have this in real time and conversation was just so deeply impactful to me and touching and even talking about it right now, making me feel a little bit emotional because you know, maybe some people that's their normal, but that was to me to be able to be that vulnerable and comfortable being that vulnerable and, and transparent with my dad and, and as a husband and a father, the things that I was worried about and um, not being able to provide for my family and protect them and, and to hear from him the things that he'd gained over the recent years uh, about being a peaceful, calm, settled heart and being in a good space was just the it was just what I needed at that time. It was I can't even explain it, but that was that was huge. And since then, every Saturday morning, with few exceptions, we get on Facebook Messenger 1030 and talk till about 12. And sometimes we've had some really deep conversations and sometimes we've had some reminiscence of um, past days. And a lot of times we just kind of talk about current events or uh, what's happening in my world or his world. But we've had this wonderful, wonderful relationship. And when I think back 10 years from this last year, my dad was diagnosed with cancer he was diagnosed with stage four lymphoma and it was a bad year I lost my stepfather that year I lost um, a very dear friend of mine that we shared our life with for 22 years it just was a year of disasters and I was just about positive I was going to lose my dad that year and instead I've got had an additional 10 years with him which has been a blessing in itself but this has been a blessing beyond blessings. And I would have been satisfied with the relationship we had prior to COVID. But when I think about in the midst of everything else of, of COVID and the pandemic, I can point to this one thing as, as the gold, as the silver lining, as the blessing, the good that came from the bad. If not for COVID, if not for the pandemic, if not for that moment of fear and anxiety, I don't, I don't know that I would have had these last three years of weekly video calls. I treasure every single conversation we have. I look forward to them. Uh, they help me keep me grounded and rooted. And I could go on and on, but I think I've probably already conveyed just how much that means to me and that alone was the one that alone was worth going through everything I've gone through was to gain that um but the other and I think I think too COVID in general uh, the pandemic has caused us to really take a step back and look at the relationships around us and the people around us and to realize that in a moment's notice, everything can change. I think we, we've we seen that more than ever in these last three years. So if you've had difficulty finding your blessing in the darkness, I want you to step back, having heard the story, and think, are there any relationships in your life that have become closer or stronger because of the trials of the pandemic? 
because of facing them together, because of that shared trauma and shared experience. They may be that closest, you may not even have thought of it as a blessing, but ask yourself, if this had not happened, would these relationships be what they are today? And the second story I do want to share, the second um, piece that I want to draw attention to is my health. And uh, there's the question, there's always the question of which came first, the chicken or the egg? And did I have the underlying health conditions first or did COVID and long COVID exacerbate it or, or whatever? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But what matters is I've had probably the most complete physical workup I've ever had <laughs> over the last couple of years with all my weird shortness of breath and tachycardia. Uh, I've had test upon test upon test that all came back normal which all in, in themselves should be a, a <laughs> blessing but you know, we've talked about that kind of those mixed feelings you have when uh, it all comes back normal and then you you feel like maybe it is in my head maybe i'm just being dramatic what's wrong with me um, but then you get the medical validation uh, but in in this last uh roundabouts of stuff i uh, he had another Holter monitor, had an echo, another echocardiogram. And uh, what came out of that was uh, discovering I've got a grade one diastolic dysfunction, but that otherwise my heart seems to be working okay. Um, I've got supraventricular tachycardia, but they're not concerned about that. And then, um, you know, a few months ago, I got also got a word that I have an ascending aortic aneurysm. And of course, you know, <laughs> me, not a medical professional, uh, you hear the word aneurysm and that's all you hear. That's all I hear is aneurysm. And that's all I know is that is very bad. That is very bad. And, and it brought me back to the, the year before I was diagnosed, 2021, um, with all these you know, wondering maybe I don't have long COVID. Maybe my doctor's right. Maybe I don't have long COVID. But maybe there's something really wrong with me. Maybe my, maybe my heart's bad. Maybe my lungs are bad. You know, maybe I have a pulmonary embolism. Maybe I have a this or that. And and spending that year feeling like medically fragile, like something could happen to me at any time. So getting that diagnosis of long COVID was a relief. But having these things be diagnosed with my heart, you know, my cardiac system. I'm like, what, what does this mean? You know, what does this mean? And I'm, so I was, re, so I asked to be referred to the cardiologist at the long COVID clinic at uh, the hospital. And I met with him and he was wonderful. And he really set my, my mind and my wife's mind at ease uh, that these things are really kind of normal and it's okay. And we're just going to see him as needed. We didn't have a follow-up appointment. Um, prior to seeing him, I did get put on a beta blocker, which helped to detect cardia. Uh, but ended up kind of dealing with some bradycardia. Um, and I could go on, again, I could go on with this stuff. But uh, the bottom line of that is, is the one thing I do know about an aneurysm is that a lot of times by the time you know you have it, it's too late. So the fact that I've gone through all these tests and all these things, the silver lining and the blessing out of that is that these things have been found. And they're at a point where they're not a concern. But they're duly noted, and they'll be something that are be checked on regularly, and we will be way ahead of it. So I could fret and stew and stress all day long, and sometimes I do, um, especially before I saw the cardiologist, especially when my heart's doing this weird irregularity, heart rate variability, tachycardia, ups and downs and thing. Um, I could stress over that, but I choose... I'm choosing to just accept things as they are. And if the cardiologist, who is the professional, who's associated with the long COVID clinic, who's educated in long COVID says, it's all okay. You are okay. Your heart is good. I'm going to accept that. But I'm going to say that the, the bright, other bright spot out of that is that because of long COVID, if these things, because there are some cardiac things that run in my family, so if these things were already present and just not seen and would not have been seen otherwise, then I'm thankful for that. Um, that if not for long COVID, I wouldn't have had all those workups and who knows how things might have played out.
we don't want to speculate, but at the same token, I'm choosing to see that as one of the silver linings in this as well. So again, I uh, challenge you to that as you're thinking about your health, as you're thinking about exams you've been through, maybe some side findings that have been discovered, maybe some or some new self-care things that you've learned since then uh, that have been helpful to you. Or maybe it's just been through the pandemic of the value of stepping back from a high stress job and living and, and, and being constantly immersed in a really stressful or toxic environment and the importance of taking space and taking care of yourself and prioritizing yourself and, and your relationships. COVID gave us that as well too. You know, it sounds kind of counterproductive to be talking about the good things about the pandemic. But I believe that when bad things happen in your life, there's an, always an opportunity, especially if you can't stop it, or even if you can't change it, to find the good among the bad and to make beauty from ashes. And for me and my faith, this is what God does on a daily basis. God takes the weak and broken things of this world, the things that are, the world would consider garbage or disposable, and God redeems and restores and makes it into a new creation. One of my favorite images is that of a mosaic. If you've seen some beautiful mosaics, you can gaze upon their beauty and think about the artistry of the hands that formed it, but you reflect on that mosaic is made of pieces of broken glass. And to those pieces of glass, the original pieces of glass, I'm sure they, there was a point where if they had feelings, they felt shattered and broken, and they felt like they were garbage to be thrown out with yesterday's trash. But along comes the artist who sees the beauty in, in the broken, and he sweeps it all up and carefully collects it and separates it out by colors, and then with his craftsmanship and his skill and creativity, forms them together to create something new out of the broken. And isn't this what God does in our lives? He makes beauty out of brokenness. There's a saying too, I like, I don't remember who wrote it, but it says, without the crushing of flowers, there would be no perfume. And without the crushing of grapes, there would be no wine. And without the crushing of olives, there would be no oil. And so it is sometimes the momentary crushings that we go through produce in us something that is far lasting worth, far longer lasting worth and value than what we're experiencing in the moment. We can choose to focus on the pain and the discomfort and the inconvenience or trauma of the moments of crushing or the fleeting nature of what was, or we can embrace the longer, more eternal lasting effects of what is now. So again, as I said at the outset, I would love to hear from you. Um, my email is joe at longhaulhope.com. You can also write me on Twitter. My handle is at longhaulhope. I'm also on Facebook, longhaulhope. I would, again, I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear your stories. I would love to hear what blessings, what good things came out of the pandemic for you. What came out of your sickness? What came out of the setbacks that you faced? It's because it's these things, finding these things that gives us the spark of hope to push through for another day, even when we're at our worst. So again, it's been quite a while since my last episode, but it is my hope that this new year, as I'm recording this, this is the beginning of, again, a more frequent recording of some very candid conversations uh, from my own perspective and experiences and also what's happening in the news and the world of COVID and maybe hearing from others. 2023 is not 2020 part three. <laughs> Look, feels like it. It's a new year. It's a new day. It's a new moment. What are you going to do with it? I'm Joe. Thanks for joining me today. And I look forward to talking with you again really soon. God bless. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please subscribe, share, or leave a rating and a review. And I'd love to hear from you. You can contact me at joe at longhaulhope.com and follow Long Haul Hope on Facebook and on Twitter. And as always, get plenty of rest, 
be compassionate with yourself, and keep choosing hope. I'll chat with you again soon.